Number 56. Determine the delta G notch for the following reactions. And then we have letter B. So chlorine molecules dissociate according to this reaction. We have Cl2 gas, which will yield 2 Cl gas. Now 1.00% of the Cl2 molecules disassociate at 975 degrees Kelvin, or 975 Kelvin, and a pressure of 1.00 atm. All right, so out of all this information, we have to find the Gibbs free energy. Now there's a couple of formulas for Gibbs free energy, so maybe let's just say we don't really know which one we're using yet, right? Now they did give us a temperature, right? 975 Kelvin is a temperature. Okay, so we have a T. And they gave us a pressure of 1 atm, so that's a P. And they told us that, okay, 1.00% uh, of these Cl2 molecules dissociate or break down into the two Cl gases. But I need to somehow relay the information into a formula that will give me the delta G. Now, in this case, there's a couple of formulas here, but since we're talking about dissociating, we're talking about how much is reacting or how much is breaking down over time, and over time means that this will happen at equilibrium. So when you're dissociating, right, we're basically talking about something that's going on at equilibrium. And if we're talking about equilibrium, we always need an equilibrium constant, which is capital K. So now I say to myself, okay, do I know any formulas that will relate a delta G with the K value? And yes, I do. That's this formula right here. Delta G equals negative RT ln of K. Now, do we know any values already in this formula? Well, we know the R value, right? The R value is 8.314, especially if we're using this formula. The units are going to be joules per mole times Kelvin. So the delta G value is going to come out in joules, and the temperature has to be in Kelvin. But that's okay, because the temperature that they gave us was already in Kelvin, 975 Kelvin. But the thing is, is that I don't have that equilibrium constant right now, capital K. Once I get that, I can plug this in and solve for G. So I have to hold out on this for a little bit because the main thing here is what is going to be that equilibrium constant? Well, now I'm starting to search for formulas that I can link together. Now they did give me a temperature and they gave me a pressure. So I think back to all of my gas formulas, right? Because we're dealing with gases and I only have one temperature. I only have one pressure. So the one formula that comes to mind is PV equals NRT. I have only one pressure right here in this formula, and I have only one temperature. Now let's see, do I know any other values? Well, the R value in this case is a constant number. Now, don't get confused that it's going to be the same as this R value. 8.314 is used for energy, joule values. 0.0821, or more specifically, 8206, is used for pressure values. So the units for this R value is not the same as the other one. 0 0.08206, and the units are ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So that's why the pressure has to be an ATM. The temperature has to be in Kelvin, the volume has to be in liters, and the N, the number of moles, is uh, the number of moles, right? But I know the pressure, I know the temperature, I know this R value, but I have no idea what this volume is, and I have no idea of what this N value is, right? The number of moles. But is there something that can link between volume and moles? So now I'm starting to think of other formulas. Geez, how many formulas are in this problem? But if we have a mole, which is the N value, and I divide it by liters, which is the V, what essentially I get, right, moles divided by liters is molarity. And molarity can get me to equilibrium constants. Remember, when we write our equilibrium uh, expression, products of reactants, one of the 
uh, units that are allowed is molarity. So now I'm just looking for N divided by V. So I'm just going to rearrange this formula to get N divided by V, right? And maybe if I just, let's see, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. I'll, I'll put this back later. But if I want N divided by V, I'm going to divide V on both sides because there we go, N divided by V. So the V's will cancel out on this side. And I get P equals NRT all over V. Now, if I don't want the RT, I want to get rid of that because I only want N divided by V, right? N divided by V. So what I'll do is I will divide. Or maybe I'll just say divide by RT. And essentially, what you're doing is you're dividing by RT. So the RT goes bye-bye. And now you're left with your new formula, which is P divided by RT equals N divided by V. And this is what we're solving for. So let's see, do I know these three units? Well, yeah, the pressure is ATM, and that's the correct unit to plug in, right? Because the R value, one of them is ATM, so that's good to go. The R value, I'm going to swing down over here now. So there's that guy. And then the temperature, which they already told us was 975 Kelvin. So let's go for it. N divided by V equals, I have these two numbers, and then I have 1.00 up on the top. I have the 0 0.08206, and then I have the 975. Let's find out what that molarity is, right? N divided by V, which is the same as molarity, equals 1 divided by 0 0.08. Oh, what just happened there? I have no idea. 0 0.08206. I'm going to press divide by again to make sure that that 975 is in the denominator. And I get 0 0.0120, we'll say 50, right? 0 0.01250, 0. that's good enough. And that's the molarity. Now that's going to be the Cl2. This was the starting concentration. So, Pause the video if you need to, because we're basically going to just get rid of all of this, because the only thing that I need is this molarity. So I just need more room to write stuff down. So I'm going to say, okay, n divided by v was the molarity, and we're good to go. So bye-bye. Now I'm just going to write the balanced equation. So we have Cl2 gas yields 2 Cl gas. Now, they're telling us that 1.00% of the Cl2 molecules disassociated. So that means that 1% out of the starting is gone. Which means if we do an ICE, right? If we do an ICE, if you want to do ICE, we have the initial, which was 0 0.01250, and the Starting for the two CLs is nothing, so zero. So maybe I can now get rid of this. Right? Maybe I'll just put it over here. Now, C stands for change. This would have to be plus 2x because there was 2 in front, so that has to match. And this would be minus x. This is plus because, remember, you can't go you know, any lower than zero. You can only go up. Now, let's see. At the end of the day... The equilibrium concentration for the Cl2 has to be 99% because 1% disassociated. That means 1% went to the Cl2. So that's how the percentage is now divvied up at equilibrium. You still have 99% of Cl2 and you have 1% or 1.00%. So maybe I'll just make that a little bit more going with the question. 
of that, right? So now let's see what 99% is. Remember, you could always figure this out by taking the amount 0 0.01250 and timesing it by the decimal percent, right? We never put percentages into equations. We always use the decimal version. So just take the, the decimal, move it to the left two times. So this would be the same thing as times 9, 0.99. So I'm going to take 0 0.0125 times it by 0.99. And that's how much is left, 0 0.012375, okay? Now we know what the X value is, right? If I just link this up and I say 0 0.01250 minus X equals 0 0.012375, I could just solve for the x value, which then I can use over here. So if I just bring the x over, plus x plus x, and I can subtract this value, I could do it with one shot, right? 0 0.012375, this number gets canceled, the x is get canceled on this side, and x equals 0 0.0125, minus this number. So I have x equals 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's the molarity. Now keep in mind that we have two of these here. So this has to be two times 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth. That would be 2.50, but we could just double check this times two. There you go. And that's gonna be your equilibrium, two 0.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, since we have the two equilibrium values, this one and this one, I can now throw it into my equilibrium expression. So let's just write that out. K equals, keep in mind that the equilibrium expression is products over reactants. I have one product and I have one reactant. The product would be Cl, and that has to be squared because you raise it to the coefficients. The bottom one would just be Cl2. So I have my Cl would be 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, and the Cl2 would be 0 0.012375. So K equals, let's do this out. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, that has to be squared, divided by 0 0.012375. I can plug this all into the calculator at once and I can get a K value. So I'm gonna take this value, raise it to the second, and then I'm just gonna divide by this lovely number up here. I see it, so I can just grab it. Love the TI-84 and K equals 5.051, maybe I'll put this down below here, times 10 to the negative sixth. No units for the equilibrium constant, but this number that we just found, that's the K value here. We're getting there. So the K value is now 5.051 times 10 to the negative sixth. Now when I put this value in, I'm not going to round because I have the number already over here. But probably if you just input this value, you'll probably get the same answer. So negative, let's see, ln of 5.051 times 10 to the negative six, we have the 8.314 and we have the temperature 975, I could plug this all into the calculator at once. Delta G equals negative 8.314 times 975 times the ln of this value. And there you go. Uh, I guess we'll do three sig figs. So 9.89 times 10 to the negative, not negative, how many? One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, yep. 
9.89 times 10 to the fourth, and that's joules per mole. Just know that standard delta G values are generally in kilojoules per mole. So if you want to just convert that, joules to kilojoules is just dividing by a thousand. Or you could take the decimal and move it to the left three times. So it would just be 998.9. Uh, and that equals your delta G value. And there you go. Woo. Okay. I really hope this helped. And maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll just put it up here just in case you can't see it. 98.9 joules per mole. Dunzo. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Um, thanks for viewing this video. I hope it helps. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. And I will be talking to you soon through a video in another lesson. Hope you guys have a great day. And tell your friends about this cool channel. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Let's talk to you soon. Bye-bye.